Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of Greyhound Racing in the UK. Uh, so each one of these uh, represents a different uh, Greyhound in a race. So we have a race ID and then the Greyhounds, uh, a bunch of characteristics about the Greyhound as well as their odds of winning a race, etc. Uh, and then at the end we have um, the we have a winner prediction. We're going to try to predict if a given Greyhound will win their race. And we'll also have um, the finish prediction, which will try to predict uh, the actual place that a given Greyhound will come in. So let's uh, get going. Um, I'm going to import NumPy and Pandas just for working with the data. Uh, then we're going to do some visualization with uh, PyPlot and Seaborn. And then I'm using the train test split function and standard scalar from sklearn for pre-processing. And we're going to use five different classifiers today to try to make predictions, and we'll see which does the best. So I'm going to go ahead and import those, and we can load in the data using pandas.readcsv. So I'm going to paste in the file path here to the CSV file, and we'll take a look. Uh, and uh, so, like I said, we're, we have two different classification tasks today. Uh, and the first thing uh, to do is get a little info on the data set. Uh, so you can see we actually have no missing values uh, because we have 12,006 total entries and the same number of non-nulls in every column. So if we, we can double check this with data.isNA, which gives us a, a true in a given location if there's a missing value. We can then sum all those trues over the x-axis and again over the y-axis to get the total number of missing values, uh, which comes out to zero. So we don't have any missing values, which is very good. And before we get into pre-processing, I just want to do a little EDA, some basic EDA. Just want to see, visualize a few things about the data. Um, so first thing I'd like to do is call data.describe, which just gives a, a, uh, a few um, basic statistics about each uh, column. So we have the count of, no, of examples. This should be the same for all columns, so we have no missing values. Uh, we have a mean, standard deviation, minimum, and 25 uh, percentile, 50 percentile, uh, 75 percentile, and finally, uh, the maximum. And uh, I'm not going to go into this too too much, but you can see at the end here we have we do have some um, which which, which uh, there are a few uh, columns in here that just have zeros and ones. I believe uh, probably two of them. Uh, but if we want to, because I want to plot the distributions, the actual distributions of each of these. And if we have a column that has only zeros and ones, we're not going to be able to plot the distribution um, because uh, we're actually going to get an error from Seaborn when we try to plot it. Uh, it'll say the, ban the KDE bandwidth is too low. Uh, so what I'd like to do is get the non-binary columns here. And what that will be is I'll just use a list comprehension to take every column for column in data.columns, but only if the length of unique values in that column, so data subcolumn.unique, uh, is greater than 2. So if we have more than two unique values in a given column, we'll throw that column in this list of non-binary columns. Um, and then we'll create a new matplotlib figure with a figure size of, uh, I'll do 22 by 15, which seemed to work well. And then, um, actually I'll 24 by 15. Uh, and we'll say for i in range, um, I, I'm gonna do the range of the length of non-binary columns. So we're going to do for each non-binary column indexed by i. We're going to create a new, uh, first we'll create a subplot. And I'm going to display subplots in a 5 by 6 grid indexed by i plus 1 to start. Um, well, it, this will start at i plus 1. Uh, it's, sorry, it will always be i plus 1 uh, because the subplot function requires that you have non-zero indexers. Then we'll use uh, the Seaborn dist plot to plot the distribution, which will be a KDE uh, kernel density estimation sort of function to try to um, fit to the distribution. And then we'll also have the actual histogram displayed under it. So that's what the disk plot does. And we'll, we'll plot here data sub uh, non-binary columns, non-binary columns sub i. So the ith non-binary column, which is what we're indexing through here. Uh, we're just going to plot that. And at the end, we will show uh, all of them. And we have no attribute dist plot. 
Oh, it should be dist, dist, not dis. Okay, and this should generate one for each of the non-binary columns. Um, so it should just take one moment while that generates. And here we go. Uh, so we can see uh, we have some categorical features here. Uh, like this one, you can see they're in categories. There's no values in between. Uh, and that will be the favorite, the finished, uh, the public estimate, actually cut off a little here, uh, and the trap. Uh, so trap is the starting position, and I believe the favorite is their favorite starting position. So um, when we go into pre-processing, uh, we may want to one-hot encode these categorical features. However, I found that leaving them as ordinal variables, actually, uh, it, the one-hot encoding does not improve the performance of the model. So I'm not going to one-hot encode them. I'm just going to leave them as an ordinal variable because apparently a low trap versus a high trap means something to the model that's just as meaningful as a one-hot encoding. Um, and the next thing I want to do is just get the correlations. So I'm going to create a set of correlations called core, which is uh, the correlation matrix that comes from data.core. And we're going to create a new PyPlot figure again, this time with a figure size of 21 by 17. Uh, and I'm going to call it scborn.heatmap and pass in core. I'm going to turn on the annotations so we can see the actual correlation values, uh, set the minimum value to negative 1. Uh, and I'm going to change the color map to Mako. And let's show. And when that's done, we will pre start pre-processing. OK. So here it is. Um, so you can see we have a few high values here. Uh, for example, 0.94 is very high, 0.93 is very high, 0.87 is quite high. And then on the negative side, we don't have nearly as many. Uh, 0.74 is the highest here, I believe. Uh, and I'd like to try to figure out why we have such a high value here. For example, this one, uh, distance places all is highly cor correlated with distance all. So we actually look into the description here. We can see uh, this is the average distance of races uh, where the Greyhound finished first and second. And this is the average distance of races of all races run by Greyhound. So that makes sense that they'd be very correlated. Uh, high, there's a strong positive correlation here. And then for this one, we have races all and races 380. Um, so races 380 is uh, it's only for a certain form of race, the three, 380 meter race, uh, which is uh, correlated with the total number of races that they've run. So that makes sense as well. On the negative side, we have early 380 and stay 380. Uh, so early 380, uh, where is that? Here, uh, average relative early position in the seven most recent uh, 380 meter races. Uh, and the stay 380 is average finish position minus the early position. Oh, so we actually have, uh, this is actually a function of the, the early position. You can see, so we have a negative correlation here because we're subtracting it from uh, the average finish position. All right, and I, I don't want to go too far into this, uh, but we can see the correlations like that. Uh, now I'd like to pre-process the data. So I'm going to pass in, uh, I'm going to call a function pre-process inputs that's going to take in a data frame and a target. And the reason I'm doing a target here is because um, we want to specify which uh, which column we'd like to make predictions on. I want this function to be able to pre-process for both the winner and for the finished, which are our two prediction columns. So by default, I'll have it on winner. And we'll start by creating a copy of the data frame so we don't modify the original version. And over here, uh, first thing I'd like to do, let's, really, let's take a look at the data, right? First thing I'd like to do is drop the race ID column. Uh, that's because uh, we, d we want to be able to build a, an estimator that can make predictions regardless of what race it is. And so we don't want the model to draw, um, to draw um, similarities between records based on the race. Uh, so let's actually drop that. We'll drop the ID column. I'll say race ID actually. Race ID. DF equals DF dot drop. Race ID from axis one. Uh, and then we'll split the data frame into X and Y. Uh, because like I said, we're not doing any one hot encoding. Uh, so everything is in numeric form already. And uh, we're leaving them in their uh, 
in the way they're encoded already. Uh, there, and uh, in addition to that, uh, we have no missing values. So we're just ready to go straight into splitting the data. And the way we split it is going to depend on our target. So if our target is winner, uh, then the first thing we're going to do is drop the finished column. And the reason here is you can see the winner column is actually generated from the finished. Uh, when we have a 1 in the finish, which means they came in first place, then they're the winner. Otherwise, we're all zeros. Uh, so this column here is actually, um, it, it, all the information needed to predict it is contained within this column. Uh, so leaving in the finished column would be cheating if we wanted to predict the winner. So we're going to drop that finished column. df equals df.drop finished um, from access 1. And then we'll create our x and y. So y is going to be what we're trying to predict. In this case, it's winner. So df sub winner. And then x is going to be all the rest of the data, which we'll use to try to make the predictions. So we drop uh, winner from axis 1 and store that in x. Now, otherwise, if target equals finished, then we're going to do a very similar thing. I'll just copy this in except instead of dropping the finished column, we're going to drop the winner column because obviously there is some, uh, because this was generated from this, we don't want to leave this on. It would be sort of cheating again, although not as much information uh, is carried in the winner uh, that would allow us to accurately predict the finished. However, we would always know when we have a first place based on the one in the winner column. Um, so I'm dropping winner and then our Y is going to be finished because that, that's what we're trying to predict. And then X is all the rest of the data, so I'm going to drop finish from that. Okay, so we've split our data, uh, and I, let's just return that to see what it looks like. We'll return X and Y after that's been done. Uh, X and Y is going to equal our pre-processed inputs, and we're just going to pass we're going to pass in data instead of DF. And so X, uh, because our target is winner, you can see the winner column is gone and the finish column is gone, and our Y is just the winner column. Now, if I go up here and change this to finished, then our x column, uh, they're both gone again. x is the same. However, our y is now the finished column instead. Uh, so let us actually do our train test split now. So train test split. Uh, we'll use the train test split function from sklearn for this. We're going to split x and y uh, with a train size of 70%, which will give 70% of the data examples uh, into the train set and the other 30% into the test set. And we can include shuffle equals true, uh, which because um, this will this is on by default, but it will shuffle the data before it makes the split. Uh, and therefore, I'd like to include a random state to ensure that the shuffle is always done in the same way. Now, this will return four new sets of the data x train, x test, y train, and y test. Uh, and I want to return these four new sets of the data down here. So let's take a look at x train once that's done. Uh, so it's just 70% of x. We saw what x was. And y train is just 70% of y. It's currently finished. So if I change this back to winner, uh, you can see at y train is just 70% of the winner uh, column. Okay, and then we'll scale. So as we saw before, um, if we, in data.describe, you can see all of the means uh, and standard deviations are all over the place. So these distributions are all on different scales. You can see the different scales there. Um, some of them are on very small scales, others are on larger scales. So I'd like to uh, standardize them so that they all take the same scale. Um, we can do that with a scalar. Uh, I'm gonna use a standard scalar which gives each column a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. And we can fit the scalar to just the train set, because we want to sort of pretend we only have access to the train set at the time of pre-processing. And then we'll uh, use scalar.transform to convert both x train and, y tr and x test. Sorry. So we'll do it for once for x train and once for x test, like this, uh, transforming them each which will give them the zero mean and zero variant, uh, one variance, uh, unit variance, um, based on the fit that we have just the train set. So in here, um, these do return NumPy arrays, and I want to keep it as a data frame. Let's see if I run this. Uh, we, we get back, uh, these have been scaled, but we can't uh, visualize it as a data frame now. So I'm going to go in and change them back into data frames with pandas.dataframe. And I'm going to include the column names at the end, which is x.columns. 
Uh, and we can take a look now, and you can see that all of the columns have been scaled. If we take, if we call describe on this now, xtrain dot describe, uh, you can see that the means are all very close to zero. We have scientific notation, but uh, very very small numbers here, with uh, 10 to the negative 15, 16, 17. And then our standard deviation is all extremely close to one. So it's doing exactly like I said, uh, giving a mean of zero and a variance of one for each column. Um, and our Y is still intact as the labels. So let's actually start training our models. Uh, this one actually will be the winner prediction. So we'll be predicting the winner column. And now down here, I'm gonna create a bunch of models. Um, I'll actually just copy this in because I don't wanna type it all out. Uh, but basically we're creating five different models. We have the K nearest neighbors algorithm, K, near, K neighbors classifier. Uh, then the logistic regression model uh, and a support vector classifier with a radial basis function kernel. Then we have the decision tree classifier and finally a multi-layer perceptron classifier or neural network. And uh, you can see I've just created a dictionary here that's mapping the name of the model to the actual instance of the model. And then down here, all we have to do is say for each name and model in models.items. Uh, so dot items returns the key value pairs of a dictionary as tuples. So then we can iterate through them like this. And we can fit each one on the train set, x train, y train. And we can print out just a confirmation message that says each model has been trained. So name plus uh, trained. And we can run this. Um, and there are only five of them here. Uh, so it shouldn't take too long. And we can display the results in similar fashion by saying for each name and model in models.items. Our neural network took a while, but it's done. Uh, for each name and model, we're going to print out the name of the model plus accuracy. So we want to see the accuracy value. I'm going to display it to two, uh, two decimal places and as a percentage, and then format that with model.score x test y test. So model.score, in the case of a classification model, will return an accuracy value, which we're then going to multiply it by 100 because we want to display it as a percentage. Uh, and so we can see, uh, these. this is the results. Uh, it looks like the logistic regression and support vector machine came in first with an accuracy of 83%. And the other ones are falling close behind, uh, except for the decision tree, which has a much lower accuracy of 71.57%. Uh, uh, so now I'd like to do the same thing, but for the uh, place prediction. We want to predict now where, in, where a given Greyhound finished. Uh, so I'm just going to grab this up here, paste it in, and just change the target to finished. All right, take a look at X train and Y train. And you can see we're now predicting the finished column. And let's just copy all this code up here and this one. All right, so we're training and we'll check the results. All right, uh, it finished. And we can see uh, the models are clearly doing much worse on this task. And this makes sense because generally, as the number of uh, cl possible classes uh, in the classification task goes up, the harder the task becomes. Because here the model only has to choose between two possible classes. Down here we have to choose between, uh, I believe it's, uh, we could actually check with ytrain.unique. Uh, choosing between six possible classes. Uh, so the probability that we're getting one right in, uh, is, is uh, significantly reduced. You can think of it sort of like uh, up here. If we weren't using a model, if we just wanted to make a random guess, we'd probably get a 50% chance of getting the guess correct. Whereas down here, we would get a one uh, sixth uh, chance, uh, which comes out to be about 16.7% uh, chance. So uh, that will sum up today's video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.